What's up? This is Naked Eli, the mostly unclothed gamer, and welcome to episode 3 of Breaking Halo. Today we're going to be breaking down personal ordinance drops, and I'm sick with the flu, so I'm still going to try to get through this. Hopefully we can get through it together. The stuff is going to get pretty technical, and there's a lot of math and logic involved. So if you've got ADD, I've copied my script in the description for you to follow it all. Alright, so first I want to share a pair of graphics with you. This chart shows the frequency of personal ordnance weapon appearance on small to medium sized 4v4 maps. These are maps like Haven, Abandoned, Complex, and Adrift. Notice three interesting tidbits here. Damage boost has only a 1 in 7 chance of appearing on the right. You have a 1 in 8 chance of getting a sniper weapon in the center. And you have about a 50% chance of getting a shotgun weapon on the left. So now that we know that, let's move on to the larger map frequencies. This is for 8v8 maps like Ragnarok, Meltdown, Vortex, and Exile. You'll notice some key differences. The frequency of damage boost is increased to 1 in 4. You now have a 1 in 18 chance of getting a binary rifle drop in the center, and you have a 1 in 19 chance of either getting an incineration cannon, rockets, or fuel rod gun on the left. So the trend we see is that the most powerful items are also the rarest. If you want to increase your chances of getting a rare weapon drop, you have two abilities at your disposal. The tactical package requisition from the tracker specialization allows you to re-roll your ordnance. So all you math geniuses out there know that that's basically doubling the rate at which you can get rare drops just by itself. Then we have the support upgrade ordnance priority, which unlocks at SR26. It reduces the threshold for personal ordnance by roughly 20%, meaning you can get personal ordnance drops at a much faster rate. But the question is, is it worth it? So here comes the uber technical math part, pay close attention. The normal point requirement for personal ordnance in a standard Infinity Slayer game is 70 points with a 30% point increase multiplier. This means you get your first POD at 70 points, your second at 30% more than that, which is 91 points, and your third at 30% more than that, which is 118 points, and so on. However, the minimum point increase, as you know, in Halo 4 is 5 points, such as for an assist. So those numbers in reality need to be rounded up to the nearest 5. So for these three, it's 70, 95, and 120 respectively. That means to get your first three ordnance drops, you need the sum of those, which equals 285 points. That's slightly more than the average player gets per game of Infinity Slayer. Now let's say you have ordnance priority on as your support upgrade, you're going to cut roughly 20% off those numbers. So your first drop comes in at 56 points, your second at 30% more than that, which is 72 points, and your third likewise at 94 points. But given the 5 point increases, round them up. Those numbers in reality are 60, 75, and 95 respectively. Now these three drops add to only 230 points, lowering the threshold for your third ordnance drop per game by 55 points, or roughly 4 to 5 kills per game including medals. So what does this all mean for you? If you're the kind of player who earns more than 230 points per game, but less than 285, then ordnance priority is perfect for you because it will get you an extra ordnance you wouldn't be getting otherwise. If, however, you are the kind of player who earns more than 285 points per game, you will be wasting your support upgrade slot on ordnance priority unless you reach the threshold for the fourth ordnance drop at 345 points total. So to sum up, if you earn less than 285 points per game, use Ordnance Priority. If you earn more than 285 points per game, don't use Ordnance Priority. I'd like to note that this assumes you always call in your Ordnance as soon as possible and aren't wasting points on any full Ordnance meters. Combine that with the Requisition Tactical Package and you can be getting a lot more Ordnance per game. Now as far as general advice goes, real quick, just remember not to stand directly under a drop or it can remove half your shields and possibly kill you if you're weak. Pods drop in generally the same direction you were looking when you called them in, close quarters weapons go really well with speed boost, and sharing is caring, so offer your personal ordnance to teammates if you don't want any of the options, especially if they might have a good combo like saw with damage boost or sword with speed boost. So that's it for this episode. Hope I didn't hurt your brain too much. I'm going to go rest now. Go out there and rock the personal ordinance. If you want to see my Tuesday tactics episode on lockout strategy and callouts, click on the video on the left. If you want some tips for ranking up fast, click on the video on the right. Subscribe for more. This is Naked Eli. Thanks for watching.